welcome or welcome back to my channel Stitch and Style by me Nadia and today I've got a little bit of an update on the Oh So Me challenge. So first of all I'm going to put in a clip of um, me and Ben talking, he's going to be answering some questions but most importantly give a big thank you to everybody who's been participating in the challenge and also donating to bowel cancer charities. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And the other thing that I want to do before I put in that clip is also to say a huge thank you again to my sponsors. And they are Helen's Closet, Merry Maid Fabrics, Anna from Pet and Pouch Nest and Stash Hub. They're all fantastic businesses and um, I would encourage you all to check them out. In fact, I bought some things with my own money from uh, my sponsors to say thank you and also, well, why not? I couldn't resist treating myself to some beautiful new things and I've not opened them yet. They actually arrived a couple of weeks ago, but I've been waiting, so um, I'm going to open them on camera. So that's going to be after um, yeah Ben makes a little appearance, so I'll insert that clip now. I'm joined again by my husband Ben, who is going to just give a little bit of a thank you for um, everybody's support of our challenge. Yeah, thank you so much. We've had so many donations, which has really led to a high total, and some of the supportive messages that Nadia received after she posted the last vlog have just been amazing uh, by some people who have been affected themselves with family or some people who didn't know anything about it so it's just been lovely to see and Nadia's told me that she's got loads of people who have participated in the challenge as well. Yeah we've had a really good response on Instagram with our challenge um, which is oh so me 23 and it's currently running and open for entries so if you haven't entered yet and you're planning to do so then you need to get your entry in by the 30th of April. That's the last day of the month, isn't it? We've really enjoyed seeing everybody's messages of support and people participating in the challenge and sharing and yeah, it's all been absolutely overwhelming. It's actually been quite emotional as sometimes. Um, so yeah, Ben's just going to give a little bit of an update on his race because if you saw our last vlog, you'll know that he was participating in a 5k as part of our fundraising efforts and you really enjoyed your first race did you Ben? Yeah I did, I was quite nervous beforehand um, I thought I was going to feel like I'd forgotten how to run overnight <laughs> um, but the the atmosphere was really good at the event and um, there wasn't too many people so you didn't feel overwhelmed that way. So I've asked people for some questions for us on Instagram and we got a couple and the first one is how did you feel after the run? Um, after the race I did feel a little bit disappointed because I was hoping to get a little bit quicker but we had a hill thrown in our way um, which I really struggled with. I had to walk up the last few metres of it and then that just uh, really, it took a long while for me to get, get back over that towards the finish line. Um, but uh, yeah, I achieved it and then once I you know, looked at the time and, and looked, compared it to some of my other races that we've done, well, 5Ks that I've, I've run. Um, and it was just nice to see that I had got a personal best and just try and work forward from there. So, yeah, I wasn't too disappointed in the end. And I think we ran a little bit further than 5k, to be fair to you, didn't we? Um, but Ben trained really, really hard, didn't you? You've like been to track and been running out running on your own when I've not been able to, to join you. So, um, yeah, it was just a fantastic first run, I think. I was giving you some advice about pacing and um, yeah, you followed all the advice and you um, paced it really, really well because that's sometimes like when you first start um, a race, you can get a little bit carried away and overdo it at the beginning, but... We did do a programme on my watch so that it was telling me when I was going too fast, so that helps as well. It was If I'd have been left to my own devices, then I wouldn't have been able to pace like that. Yeah, but your fastest K was your last K, which is the goal, and you like absolutely smashed it. I was so proud when Ben crossed the line. I thought he 
it was going to <laughs> collapse, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I allowed to keep that in? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was the worst it felt at the end of any run. I was just like, I had to just prop myself up against a, a column and just yeah. give myself a few minutes just to recover because I just worked really hard to, even though the last bit was downhill after the first, the hill that had taken it all out of me, it was just, um, I tried to, to finish it at the end. Yeah. So, congratulations from me. I'm sure everybody who's watching on completing your first race. That leads us nicely onto another question that we got, which is, what's your next goal for running? Um, immediately after, I just I didn't think I wanted to sign up to anything, um, but after talking with Nadia in the weekend and stuff, we think we're going to sign up probably for the 10k at the same event next year. Um, and that just gives me then a year to work towards trying to complete a longer distance. Uh, but obviously in the short term, I'm just going to really try and improve my 5k speed as well. And the next question is, any plans to do a marathon? I don't, I really don't <laughs> think so. I think I'll, I'll get to 10k, but I don't think I'll ever do anything further than that. Um, but that's, I think that's what a lot of runners say. So <laughs> Yeah, we'll once keep, you get hooked. We'll keep you posted after the, when the next do my 10k. <laughs> and I might go into a half marathon, and, but I, I, I doubt, I very much doubt it. <laughs> I know. I only did my first half marathon because my sister said that she was going to do it. And why don't we do it together? And I didn't really want to do one. But then, um, yeah. Um, I did it and my sister pulled out didn't she <laughs> so I just did it on my own but I actually quite enjoyed the experience I said never again after the first one but then you know I have run others since and actually I'm going to be doing the marathon this year so I've got a lot in of Chester. training in Chester yeah um, in October so um, I'm going to be training and I'll probably bore you all if you follow me on Instagram with um, more running. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's our plans for running. We've hit our target on our Just Giving page, but it is still open for donations um, until September and that's for Bowel Cancer UK. So if you're able to and you haven't already, then we'd just appreciate anything. And I will remember to link the Just Giving page um, in the description below. So, um, yeah, thanks if you have already donated and we both really appreciate it. So I also got on Instagram a couple of questions for me. The first one was, what inspired you to start sewing? Actually, my desire to start sewing actually goes back quite a long time. I remember when I was very young dreaming up outfits and I've always enjoyed clothes and um, not necessarily fashion but I always wanted to go out and buy clothes when I was younger and you know as soon as I got my first pay packet I went shopping for clothes and um, yeah I just absolutely loved going and finding different things to wear and um, just really enjoyed dressing and um, I, did, I do struggle because um, I'm tall and I'm long-waisted and I know many people find the same problems is that um, ready-to-wear clothing is just really really ill-fitting on me and um, yeah so I've wanted to sew my own clothes for as long as I can remember but um, I didn't know anybody when I was younger that actually was sewing at that time. Both my grandma and my mum could sew, but um, they stopped sewing by the time I was a child. When I did look into night classes when I was um, probably late teens and I couldn't find anything, then I suppose I just kind of gave up on the idea of doing it until... 2016 I started thinking about sewing. I found um, a local sewing school that offered a beginner class just to learn how to use a sewing machine in a day and um, yeah so I went along and I learned how to sew and I thought I would wait until after the class to buy a machine 
and they gave us some tips on what machine to buy and I went and bought a machine and then I tried a very ambitious project which was to copy some ready to wear clothing. It was um, a dungaree dress that I wanted to copy and it just went horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> And I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't have a clue about how to follow a pattern. I didn't know how to do any dressmaking. Um, so yeah, I'd started that project and then gave up halfway through. And then I never touched my machine until um, it was May 2020. And lots of people were sewing masks and I thought, oh, I can sew a mask, I'm sure. So got my machine out, re-familiarised myself with how to use it and yeah, started sewing some masks and then I progressed from there. Um, just started learning how to sew my own clothes, how to follow a pattern. So all of that is self-taught. So I was taught how to use a machine, but um, yeah, all my dressmaking is self-taught and just absolutely fallen in love with sewing. Um, I think I always knew I would if I'd started. It was just that starting that was I found the most difficult to do. But yeah, I'm so pleased that I found sewing. It's brought such joy to my life. Yeah, I'm able to sew clothes that fit me, that fit my husband. And I've never viewed myself as very creative. So it's good to have that kind of creative outlet and actually sometimes um, I'm getting a little bit braver now where I can kind of hack things, adjust things and get a little bit more creative with my makes. But like always the, the back of my mind it's like I want to create something that I want to wear. Um, yeah so I hope that answers the question. Um, I think it was a bit of a long answer so <laughs> thanks for bearing with me. And the second question for me was, what's my proudest make? So I was going to say my jeans, but I'm actually going to say my Sorrento jacket, which I made um, a few weeks ago. Um, I actually wore it out um, for a meal when we went out with the family. So all my family were there. And apparently I went to see my mum this week and she was saying that my dad was telling everybody that I'd made my own denim jacket and, and how professional it looked. And that was so heartwarming to hear that my dad was proud of me. So because, um, yeah, my dad had been proud of me, I was like, well, I'm proud that my dad's proud of me. So that's got to be my proudest make. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard sometimes to be proud of the things that I've made. You know, you always look um, at the flaws in things and what you perhaps could have done better and perhaps like want to improve next time. I really need to concentrate on celebrating my makes and what's good about my makes rather than looking at any imperfections. Right, so let's get on with opening the packages that I've got um, from a couple of my sponsors. So the first is going to be from Pet and Pouch Nest and the lovely Anna. And I must say that both of them arrived, of the packages that I got, arrived really quickly. So super efficient. So I've got this lovely little package all wrapped up in brown paper and tied with a string and a lovely personal little message from Anna. And she says, thank you so much for your order. It means the world to me. That's very sweet. And she gives some um, laundry instructions. So let's open the package and see what I get. So the first thing I bought is this lovely art gallery cotton jersey fabric. And it you can see it's like got people sunbathing um, on it. And it's really, really pretty. Um, Art gallery fabric, if you've ever had it, it's got lovely stretch and recovery and yeah, is really good quality. And I thought this would make an excellent little t-shirt to wear um, when I'm on holiday. So um, 
that's going to be jumping up to the top of my list to make and I must say that the price of this was really reasonable for Art Gallery jersey. Um, yeah, absolutely lovely. Um, really happy with that fabric. So that's the first thing that I got. And then here is the pouch that I've got and it says um, on it handmade with love and it's in this gorgeous fabric with mushrooms on it and a little owl ribbon it's just so pretty um, I've got a couple actually you know that handbags come in and yeah I use them all the time so that's going to be really useful so oh this is gorgeous it's like a little pouch um and it's got little rabbits on and it is so thoughtful so we've got um, some snap fasteners. This contains some haberdashery items. Oh, that's really good. I've not got one of these. Um, I've got a seam gauge. Um, yeah, I've not got one of those. I don't think, anyway. Um, an assortment of ballpoint needles. So maybe Anna saw that I got the, um, the cotton jersey and yeah put the um, needles in that I need for it. And then I think this is um, a fat quarter, which is really pretty, which has got some deer and rabbits. Um, so I've got um, a Gutterman thread, white thread. Use that all the time, so that's gonna come in handy. Um, a little pair of snips and a very pretty zip. So those were the haberdashery items that I got and I also got this little chick <laughs> which I think you can use as a pin cushion. Got a little Easter card. Yes, as I said this came like a couple of weeks ago um, so it was Easter then. And then this is the pattern that I wanted. Um, so it's the Josie blouse by um, experimental space and at the moment I just absolutely love these bishop sleeves it's got a proper cuff on it with three buttons there and um, looking at the line drawing you've also got like some pleats um, along the top and along the side and I just thought I just want that sleeve <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited about making that up and like I will wear long sleeves even in summer. So yeah, the, the fact that it's summer now is not going to put me off from making this in a nice floaty fabric. And I've really got into paper patterns a little bit more recently. Um, yeah, I always used to be PDF and I think that is going to be my preference, but I have enjoyed a paper pattern and um, I do tr try and trace them off um, if I can. So that's what I got from um, Pattern Pouch Nest and next I've got another package and this is from Merry Made Fabrics. Also I've got another card, I mean it's so nice ordering from small businesses that just like put in those personal touches <laughs> and they put the white jersey was the end of the bolt so please enjoy a little extra fabric. How kind. Yeah, so one of the things that I got was just some white cotton jersey. You just absolutely can't go wrong with white cotton jersey. And I love wearing white t-shirts. The next fabric that I got was this absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's so lovely. This um, lovely drapey fabric. And um, it's like a dark grey blue colour um, with this... It looks almost white, drawing on it. And I was thinking that that might pair very nicely with the pattern that I've got, the Josie blouse. Yes, so I've also got this, which is um, a little pack of buttons, um, which will come in useful. A little iron-on motif, um, which has got an owl on it, and um, a tea. <laughs> and the final fabric I've got is this designer dead stock. And I want to make some dungarees with this. Again, it's like a dark grey blue colour. 
and um, it's a twill and it's a heavyweight like cotton drill kind of fabric so yeah this is ideal for um, dungarees and I thought even maybe I could pair it with that so I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I got for my sponsors and I'll see you next time bye Thank you.